Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to the infamous Texas Deep Freeze 2021. I do remember when this happened and it was like obviously huge news. I think it was stuff to do with like the infrastructure collapsing or something like that. Basically, a lot of people lost their lives from something like this. I don't know if it was because um, Texas is maybe unprepared for like extreme cold weather or stuff to do with that. Or maybe it was just so bad that even with the infrastructure that they had in place, it was just so bad they couldn't deal with it but i don't know much about this i never really looked into it when it happened so i'm here to learn and see just how i guess brutal it really was but yeah i guess also if some of you who live in texas experience this let me know just how bad it was or people that you know who i don't know experience with the worst parts of it or whatever it is because with texas i assume it's not like the southern parts it must be with like the more northern parts like nearer to like oklahoma and stuff but i could be wrong i don't really know much about the, the sort of the weather in texas in terms of how cold it can get because i just picture it as a state that's extremely hot but yeah we're going to jump into this and learn about the texas deep freeze and yeah let's jump into it total power grid collapse it's coming for you power grid collapse. Collapse. fire the humanitarian crisis the oh, statewide blackout days. texas a state known for its resilience against heat suddenly finds itself at the mercy of two brutal winter storms. Families are left grappling with the unprecedented cold. The power's off, it's freezing cold outside. We have one piece of firewood left. Bro. And days long power outages. It soon becomes a life threatening situation. We'll unravel the great Texas freeze from how it became a record holder to all the ways this could have been less devastating. When the cold front hit that Wednesday, electric utility crews said they were prepared to respond to all reports of power outages. But this could not have been further from the truth. The next morning, the first weather advisory was issued in northwest Texas. Isolated freezing rain began falling and expanded to neighboring counties after sunset. At 6.30... Wasn't it Austin? Whoa. It was in Austin. Oh, it wasn't even... Oh shit, it was literally in the center of it. Bro, that's crazy how it can get so warm here and then you can experience these extreme colds. Wow. Bring counties after sunset. At 6.30 p.m., a Delta Airlines flight slides off the Pittsburgh International Airport taxiway. With no reports wow. of injuries, passengers were on the aircraft for three hours before disembarking. It would be another 24 hours before the plane was removed from the runway. While the Delta incident was quickly managed, it was only the first taste of what was to come as the situation in Texas escalated rapidly. What the Hours fuck? later, the Fort Worth 911 Center... This has given me a whole overview of it. This is day-by-day -day stuff. How it, like, got worse. ...was inundated with desperate calls. What do I do? Oh, my God. I think I hit one of Okay. There's my car was sitting. There's a gentleman in a car next to me. He's just screaming. I don't know how many cars are packed up. They're all stacked on top of each other. Wait, what? Wait. Just screaming. I don't know how many cars are packed up. They're all stacked on top of each other. First responders arrived at a massive car accident involving 133 vehicles. Wait, when? Why did I never hear of this? What? 130 mate i am absolutely baffled right now how the hell did this happen was it because the roads were too icy or something i mean i assume that's probably the case many of those involved were healthcare workers wearing scrubs but i mean you look at that huh? it doesn't look like it doesn't look icy so i'm kind of assuming maybe it was something else mate this is ridiculous i've never seen a crash like this this is the sort of stuff that you see in like apocalyptic films or movies where the end of the world's happened people are trying to escape and then this sort of stuff just happens what the fuck what am i seeing these cars are literally on top i think this is a, a car carrier or whatever whatever you call them but wow and hospital badges this included an off-duty emt who jumped into action working for hours even though he had a fractured ankle and other injuries from the collision what a human being you hurting anywhere can you can you call off i break this window fire engines subsequently closed off the roadway to prevent further pileups 
nearly 120 emergency responders were on the scene to clear the roadway. Meanwhile, buses arrived to help motorists warm up after being freed from their cars to prevent hypothermia. After a four-hour operation, the death toll would stand at six, or more than 60. How? I mean, that's obviously horrifying. But only six deaths from 133 cars crashing, or trucks even. The others were treated for injuries. Among them, four police officers. Due to the storm's severity and the scale of the accident, it would be several more days before the road was cleared. The collision was the most staggering crash during the February 2021 storms, but there were many more to come. As the disaster unfolded, Texas declared a state of emergency. However, the response revealed a significant oversight. Despite prioritizing gas, they relied heavily on electric heating. This revealed a lack of preparedness in managing energy. By the weekend, the freezing temperatures had forced 22 gas power plants to close. The infrastructure, including the production facilities and pipelines, were not designed to operate in such cold conditions. With the demand increased, prices spiked, making heating even more expensive and heightening the risks of power outages. Additionally, shutdowns across critical industries threatened to disrupt the economy, not just locally, but nationwide. As if that was not enough, an unprecedented winter event was heading straight for southeastern Texas. By the afternoon, an Arctic cold front hit with snow, sleet, and freezing rain battering the area and intensified overnight. The storm was driven by two weather patterns. First, higher than normal pressure over the polar region meant lower pressure in the northern U.S., letting extremely cold air move into Texas. So the whole of the U.S. was freezing, but I guess just because Texas doesn't experience this anywhere near as much as these northern, the more northern or central states, the infrastructure, like he's saying, just wasn't there. I guess these states have the infrastructure to deal with these kinds of things. And second, a polar vortex that pushed down intense bursts of cold from the North Pole. Roads <laughs> became impassable and temperatures dropped to the teens or single digits in places with wind chills below zero. This triggered the state's first ever wind chill and hard freeze warnings. Demand for electricity and gas soared as people bitterly tried to stay warm in unprepared homes. Due to the overwhelming demand, unplanned outages started happening. And soon, the energy provider, ERCOT, issued a warning about potential rolling blackouts. That very day, President Joe Biden declared a state of emergency. In the early hours of the morning, ERCOT instructed electric companies to reduce power to prevent a grid shutdown. This action, known as load shedding, resulted in more than 3.6 million people losing electricity. Huh? Among those affected were the Beckel family. And it all started with a 911 call. Fire. Did they get like a warning for this or was it just shut off? Uh, we think medical, uh, a wellness oh. check. What's going on? We have family there right now and the last time somebody spoke to them, um, they fainted on the phone and we're just trying to find out if they're okay. Okay, stand on line for Houston Medical, one moment. The Houston Fire Department knocked on the door 13 minutes later, but left when there was no answer. When dispatch returned the call, he didn't warn the firefighters about possible carbon monoxide poisoning. Nobody's on the scene, so it's one of those things. If if they get there and they have to force entry, they're gonna break the door, like break the displace the lock. Yeah, that's fine. Do that as soon as possible. Okay, but this is your family member, right? I mean, this, this is our family. We think yeah. that um, they they might have inhaled carbon monoxide in the garage. Why do you think that? The because of people that had called them in the morning. Why would he have been inhaling carbon monoxide as a question? Because the uh, car was on in the garage and they were cooking because the power was on. Oh, fuck. They were trying to charge their devices. Well, we have units out there. I'll let them know. I'll make a tactical decision on, on that incident. I'll get HPD out there. Again, they left without speaking to anyone inside. It had been more than two hours since the first call, and the anxious family member had heard nothing. I called two and a half hours ago for a wellness check. That is shocking, man. I'm calling for an update. Okay. So we went out there. Did you make contact with the people inside the home? I it spoke doesn't... to the fire department earlier. It says the, the truck was there for 15 minutes, but that's all they could tell me. Okay, that's the, people the same are still not thing on... I can tell you. So I have the same information they have. 
There's no other update. Even though this was the third visit to the house, the fire department got lost. They arrived just around midnight. There was still no response to the knocking. However, this time, they didn't just walk away. Instead, they called with additional questions before entering the house. They went to the address. They said it looks empty. Uh, uh, why do y'all think someone's there? Or, or are y'all sure, sure we someone's think, there? We think that a family of two parents and two children is unconscious uh, due to carbon monoxide inhalation. Inside, all four family members were found unresponsive. Mate, what? It's believed the family had been unconscious for more than 12 hours before responders arrived. For the 46-year-old mother and her 7-year-old daughter, it was far too late. So I assume, even if they got there before, they would have they wouldn't have survived. Although I guess maybe he said the dad and the son maybe survived. They were both pronounced dead at the scene. The father and his eight-year-old son were unconscious but alive and rushed to the hospital. Tragically, the front door to the family home had been unlocked all along. No. Later, it was discovered that the mother was using her car to keep warm. When her husband went to the garage, he found her unconscious inside the car with the engine still running. A Conroe family also woke up to an unimaginable tragedy less than 24 hours later. 11-year-old Christian Pavon was found unresponsive in the bed he was sharing with his younger brother. Just hours earlier, Christian had been excited to see snow for the first time after moving to the U.S. from Honduras in 2019 to live with his mom. Tragic home video footage shows him playing in the snow. In hopes of staying warm, the entire family of five huddled in a single room in the family's mobile home. Christian was pronounced dead that afternoon, seemingly from hypothermia. But the autopsy would tell a different story, one that would lead to a lawsuit. While families faced the brunt of the storm inside their homes, outside, the state's infrastructure began to crumble under pressure. By this point, many methane gas processing plants had lost power because they weren't listed as essential services. This made it harder to supply gas to power stations. To combat the energy shortfall, regulators manually boosted the electricity supply. But this action triggered a sudden spike in prices, with the residents seeing dramatically higher energy bills. Neighboring states were also affected by the cold, but managed to import power from the unaffected East Coast. However, this offered little reprieve for Texas, which has a largely autonomous electric grid with limited outside connections. It was five days into the storm, and it just kept getting worse. Grocery stores were starting to feel the weight of the supply issues. Wow. Customers were limited in the water and propane sales. Meanwhile, there were conflicting statements in the media regarding the blackout. Government officials said that renewable energy was mainly responsible. Well, Ericot contradicted this by saying that frozen wind turbines were not the main factor in the blackouts. The following day, temperatures started picking up, but Texans were unaware of what was still to come. As the day progressed, more power generation was restored and the rolling blackouts ended throughout the state. As the power crisis eased up, a new challenge emerged. The extreme weather had caused water mains to break, forcing people to drip their faucets to prevent pipes from freezing. Additionally, power outages impacted water treatment plants, resulting in a decrease in the water system pressure. The consequences were dire. Almost half of Texans were left without access to clean water. Their only option was to boil water from taps or melt snow. Unfortunately, due to the ongoing power outages, many were unable to do so. The severity of the situation was documented on social media which was flooded with images of people filling buckets with water and resorting to makeshift solutions like using plastic bags and toilets. I never knew it was this bad. I, I can't believe I never realized just how terrible this really was. This is like beyond anything I've ever seen in terms of like weather, weather related um, issues leading to this sort of chaos. This is ridiculous. The power outages even disrupted food distribution, causing some to be turned away from queues. But for some, it was even worse. Oh my Burst days. pipes and water mains caused severe flooding in some homes and apartments. Most houses had their water mains buried in the front yard, hidden under layers of snow, making it hard for residents to locate the shutoff valve. 
While residents struggled with frozen water mains, another emergency unfolded. Firefighters were called to a blaze at the Hilton Garden Inn. They arrived at the hotel where flames and huge columns of smoke were rising from the roof. What the, fuck? the hotel was booked to capacity, with locals occupying most of the 102 rooms due to the severe weather, which had left them with limited or no <laughs> access to water at their homes. Well, our rooms are starting to fall in. We, if we're going to start doing something here, we need to start forcing the door. No time for tea. Let's have a Salvation Army response. We got a large number of displaced residents and a large number. Two days before the fire, frozen pipes had caused flooding in the hotel lobby. To prevent further damage, the fire sprinkler system was turned off. Unfortunately, this left the building vulnerable. My. When the fire started, the disabled sprinklers let the fire spread quickly. Firefighting was made even harder because burst pipes had also damaged the city's water supply. Firefighters were able to contain the blaze after midnight. One guest suffered minor injuries and two others were treated for smoke inhalation. Sadly, a family pet named Chico the Chihuahua was lost in the fire. Chico. Just before the ninth day, the great freeze was finally over. But for victims affected by the power crisis, their fight was only just beginning. And it was time to figure out why things had gone so horribly wrong. Was the great freeze really unprecedented? And was it a coincidence that Texas was caught so off guard? The main issue was undoubtedly the high energy demand for heating in an unprepared state. The disaster was blamed on unprecedented weather, but it was somewhat predictable. This was the third time recommendations were ignored. Surprisingly, the situation could have been much worse. During the power outage, Aircott admitted in narrowly avoiding a prolonged blackout that could have lasted for months. The company defended its actions, which resulted in the largest forced power cut in U.S. history. Approximately 90% of Texans rely on Aircott for their electricity, which primarily comes from sources like natural gas, wind, and coal. Well, of course they're going to say that it's, they're, they, they could have been um, a blackout for months. They're trying to protect themselves. I mean, I don't know if they're actually telling the truth or not, but I assume... Their whole point is they're going to try and protect themselves to avoid all these lawsuits and stuff. I don't care, man. These companies, they, all they care about is profits, man. If you're going to take their word for it, then you're going to... you got to be aware of whose word you're going to take, you know, but... Flipping hell. Despite its crucial role, ERCOT does not operate its own power grid. Instead, it works with over 1,800 companies, providers, and utilities in the energy market to manage the supply of electricity. Tragically, at least 19 people died from carbon monoxide poisoning during the storm. Flipping Among out. them was 11-year-old Christian Pavone, whose autopsy revealed a similar cause of death. Initially suspected to have succumbed to hypothermia, it was later found that carbon monoxide poisoning was the actual culprit. Investigators found the fatal fumes were caused by a gas-powered generator intended for outdoor use. Notably, Texas is among six states without a mandate for carbon monoxide alarms. Soon, oh thousands my. of Texans filed lawsuits against ERCOT for deaths, injuries, and damages. But they would fail. The Supreme Court ruled that the energy supplier has sovereign immunity, which protects government agencies that provide essential services. There were 246 deaths in total, but even this was debated by the community. The storms caused 80 to 246 deaths. Flipping hell. 130 billion in losses from damages and missed opportunities. Nearly a year later, the National Transportation Safety Board's investigation into the 133 car pileup found that road operators had been warned about the severe weather. While de-icer was applied to the road surface, okay, temperatures so dropped lower than expected, which led to treacherous road conditions. Since then, Texas has passed Senate Bill 3, which mandates the weatherization of energy infrastructure to withstand extreme weather and requires regular compliance inspections. ERCOT improved its response to emergencies and public communication, creating a more reliable grid. The Public Utility Commission of Texas also strengthened management and enforcement to ensure compliance with new standards. Furthermore, public awareness campaigns have educated residents on home insulation, emergency preparations, and the dangers of carbon monoxide poisoning. But questions remain. 
Will these measures handle future extreme weather? Will weatherization finally be a priority? And most importantly, is Texas prepared for future storms? Jeez, man, that was crazy. I mean, <laughs> like I said, I heard of this. I didn't know how bad it really was. Didn't expect to see a disaster that I actually lived through on this channel. I remember my dad burning scrap wood in the fireplace so we could stretch our firewood supplies and moving all the food into the fridge in the fridge into the snow so it wouldn't go bad crazy times it's sad to see that that many people don't know the dangers of carbon monoxide it's one of those things that you can be breathing it in without knowing isn't it you just and then you just pass out and then at that point you're, you're done pretty much unless you get saved that one of the family that is horrifying that is one of the, the like the saddest stories possible man and the fact that they could have came before and helped them like who knows if that would have saved their lives but just those small little details can change everything and the person who was like calling them constantly to to check up on the people and the fact that the door was actually unlocked like so many things could have changed man fuck but i guess yeah that's just how it goes down and it was a shocking shocking weather event but if, yeah if you remember living through this i mean i say remember most of you who live in texas in these areas you're gonna remember it wasn't very long ago at all um i guess just let me know truly how hard it was to deal with this stuff because texas man it's a hot place but it can get like this as well which is crazy but yeah that's pretty much it until next time peace